welcome to this course on biblical ethics. I hope this will be helpful to you as you deal with ethical situations, not only in your own life, but among your students. So that will be the focus is ethics as it applies to the classroom setting. So let's look first at an overview of what we're going to be talking about. We're going to look at the importance of studying ethics. Why are we even talking about this as an issue? Second, we're going to look at some non-Christian approaches to ethics. Now, this is not just for academic curiosity. When we try to learn about biblical ethics, we need to be aware of what others are saying about it. That helps us get a better understanding of a Christian view of the Christian life. Then we're going to look at the foundation of ethics as the Bible and how it serves as that foundation for how we live the Christian life. Then we will see that there are actually three perspectives or three ways of looking at ethics. Three perspectives we need to consider. The first one of these is a study of the heart or our motives. How the biblical emphasis on the heart applies to ethics. We'll also look at how the results of our actions or the situations that we're involved in, how that influences our decisions, our Christian life. Then we will look at the law, the role of God's law, of rules in general, and how the Christian life relates to following standards, and laws, and rules. We'll also look at the Ten Commandments. And so finally then, we'll, as we finish our discussion of the Ten Commandments, we will see how these three perspectives relate to one another. So that's our roadmap. Hopefully it will help you keep these things in focus. So now let's talk about why we study ethics. Why is this important? Why are we going to be spending six hours or so on this course talking about this? Well, it will help if we know what ethics is. At its most basic level, ethics is just a study of how we live our lives. A number of years ago, Francis Schaeffer titled a book, uh, How Should We Then Live? or how then should we live, or how should we then live, or how then we live should, whatever. Anyway, the idea was, what are we supposed to do? How do we make choices concerning our actions? So a study of ethics considers principles and rules for deciding right and wrong. We constantly are having to make decisions like this. Okay, my mother becomes ill and is hospitalized, and I have medical power of attorney. Should I have the doctors do everything they possibly can to keep her alive? Or should I have them just keep her comfortable and relieve pain? Or should I have them withdraw all care to allow her to die and be with Christ quicker? Another situation, I'm driving on I-75 in Atlanta. Should I drive the posted speed limit, which is 55? Or should I go with the flow of traffic and drive about 80? Okay, another situation, I'm thinking about buying a lottery ticket. I can win $129 million. I could give 10% of that to my church. Is that right? Another question, should I send my child to a public school? Another question, when I teach uh, kindergartners about Jesus and I'm teaching Bible stories, is it all right for me to use a flannel graph picture of Jesus? I'm called as a witness to court. Is it okay for me to take an oath when I'm called as a witness? Or I'm teaching high school literature. And some of the books we study contain curse words. Is it all right for me to have my students read that? My son was in the army. Is being in the army a legitimate calling? Is socialism a biblical form of economics? My wife asks me if her dress makes her look fat. What do I tell her? And no, you make it look fat is not a good answer there. Or maybe you deal with things like in this video. Many years ago, I asked people to imagine that they are walking past a, a shallow pond and they see a small child who's fallen into that pond and is in danger of drowning. There's no one else around. So they can see that the child is quite likely to drown unless 
they wade into the pond and pull out the child. And if they do that, they know that the pond is not deep or dangerous, um, but they're going to ruin their shoes. Um, so there'll be some small cost to them. And I asked my students, well, do you think it would be wrong for a person in those circumstances to say, no, I don't want to spoil my shoes, so I'm not going to wade into the pond and let the child drown? And almost everybody says, of course, that would be wrong. That would be a terrible thing to do. You'd be a, a kind of monster to consider your shoes weighing against the life of the child. Then having got people to accept that view, um, I asked them, is there really such a difference between that and the situation of comfortably off people, as most people in the United States say are, um, as against uh, the one billion who are living in extreme poverty, when we know that uh, every day some 27,000 children die from poverty-related causes, and that th those deaths could be prevented if only we would share a little bit more of our wealth to provide them with basic health care or um, a system in producing enough food so we could prevent many if not all of these deaths at a cost to ourselves probably that the per life saved would be no greater than uh, a pair of shoes or sending your clothes to the cleaners. Now we're constantly called to make various ethical decisions in every area of life. A study of ethics deals with the principles to help us make these decisions. And so there are some principles we need to keep in mind as we study this. First, ethics, or doing the right thing, is not a matter of salvation. We're not saved by being ethical. Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves. It's the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So we're not studying ethics to learn how to earn our way to heaven. Our salvation is totally by grace, through faith, and even our faith is a gift from God. When we get to heaven, we won't be able to boast, look at what I did. I made my way to heaven because I made the right choices. And second, though, ethics, or living the Christian life, is not optional. The very next verse in Ephesians 2, after what we just read, tells us that good works, our Christian lives, demonstrate God's work in our lives. Ephesians 2.10, For we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus for good works which God prepared beforehand that we should walk in them. So, we're not saved by doing good works, but if we're saved, we will do good works. Okay, third, our good works, our ethical behavior, shows our love for God. John 14, 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Think about it this way. If you love your earthly father, you want to do what pleases him. You wouldn't say, Dad, I really love you, and then turn around and do everything he hates. Or imagine some wealthy businessman comes to you and gives you a check for $10 million, no strings attached. He says that he's giving the gift to you just because he wants to do something good for you. But then later, he comes to you and says he has a favor to ask of you. Would you say, who are you? Who do you think you are? Making demands on me? Get out of here. I'm not going to do anything for you. No, you'd probably fall all over yourself to do whatever he asked. Not because you thought he might take the money back. You know he won't take the money back. He's told you that. But because you're grateful for what he's done for you. Likewise, we show our love and gratitude for God when we do what he tells us. He's our Heavenly Father. He's given us the greatest gift anyone could possibly give us, his son. Shouldn't we want to obey him? We'll talk more about this later, but for now we want to see that this study of ethics is important for us. Now I want you to think about your own classroom. What are some ethical issues or ethical decisions you see happening with your students? What are some ethical problems they face? What are some ethical problems you face in working with your class? Jot down some ideas in the discussion question area for this question. 
If others have already answered there, you might respond to them as well. So take a minute and do that before you move on to the next lesson.